Just drop me a message if you can hear me. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, we are gonna get started so that we don't take too much of everyone's time. So welcome everyone to the Honours Information Evening. Um, this is The purpose of this is to introduce you to the degree so that you have a bit of a better idea of what to expect can, so you can make an informed decision as to whether you want to do the degree or not. So please ask all your questions um, at any point, but maybe see if I address it first, otherwise you are welcome to raise your hand at any point. Um, okay, so what we're going to be talking a little bit about is why you should, why we recommend you do an honors degree, um, a bit of an overview of this specific multimedia honors degree, uh, what are the modules that you'll be able to do, um, we'll, we have a brief project showreel just to give you a bit of like a, an idea of what you would be capable of doing at the end of honors. Uh, we're going to be speaking briefly about our lab, which is next door, as well as the equipment that's available there, and then just some admin details like when to apply, how to apply, etc. Okay, um, just for people online, if you have any questions, just put it in the chat and I'll get around to it. Okay, so firstly, what is an honors degree and why you should do one? Uh, so it's a one-year postgraduate degree. Postgraduate means it's after an undergraduate. That's why it's called postgraduate. Um, and it introduces an extra specialization to your undergraduate degree. So it essentially makes you slightly more of an expert in that field. Um, it is also a stepping stone to a master's degree, if that is something that you're interested in. This is the progression. You have your undergrad, then your honors, master's, doctorate. That's the, the four levels. It's also a way to turn a three-year degree into a four-year degree. This is generally the reason why some people do our multimedia honors, because if you want to go overseas, a lot of the degrees over there, a lot of their undergraduates are four years already. And so if you pitch up with a three-year degree, sometimes some companies may say, okay, but you don't actually have a degree because it's only three years. It's a diploma. Um, or it's not recognized or whatever. So sometimes, depending on the company, and this is becoming less relevant these days because nowadays it's much more about what skills you have um, as opposed to the degree you have. But for some places, having a four-year degree is valuable because it essentially counts as only an undergrad overseas. So they don't have honors overseas. And it's also a really cool way to figure out what you're interested in um, or to explore topics that already interest you. So if you know that you want to do VR or you really have this passion for this very specific application of HCI or you love animation or whatever, then that's an opportunity to spend a year just exploring those things um, with a lot more freedom than you would have in undergrad. And then also if you don't really know what you want to do um, job-wise or you kind of know but you just want to spend another year being a student, then there's that opportunity as well. Okay, so specifically the multimedia honors degree, well the multimedia honors degree rather, um, it is a one-year full-time or a two-year part-time degree. So the part-time option, if I forget to mention this later, I'm just going to say it now. There's no specific you register in a special way for this. You literally just register for the degree and take half your modules in one year and half your modules in another year. You pick how you do that split. We generally give you some tips as to which modules should be taken together um, so that you are prepared. But other than that, you can decide how to do that. Um, something to be mentioned, though, the university is kind of cracking down on the length of degrees. So there is this whole new N plus one degree rule, which is that you technically can't take longer than your normal degree's length plus one year. So you essentially have one year grace period. So I'm not 100% sure how that applies to a part-time degree. So if you were to do the degree two years part-time and then something happens that you need to extend to three years, I'm not sure whether that's going to be allowed. So just keep that in mind because um, the two years part-time is kind of just a, I, I, I don't even know if it's an official thing. It's just something we do because everyone works full-time. So it's just easier that way. So. Just keep that in mind. Um, the degree is presented after hours to allow you to go get a full-time job if you want to. Some people do, most people do. Um, some people get part-time jobs, some people just do honors full-time. There's different options. Uh, so it's presented online and, sorry, it's gonna be on campus and online next year as well. So this year we were doing that. Um, record the sessions, you can attend online. That's helpful for people who are maybe working in Joburg, can't get here by 5.30. Um, or if you want to, you want the class interaction, then you come to campus. Um, yeah, we're still figuring that one out, but it's probably the way it's going to be going forward. Is both options. Uh, it's mainly application-based work, meaning you're never going to write a test that requires you to memorize anything. You actually write no tests. I don't think you write a single test. No. Um, and you have a lot of room to explore topics that interest you. So if you're in, say, an H the, the HCI module and you're very interested in this very niche thing, you can speak to the lecturer and say, hey, I want to do this thing. 
and they'll probably help you just work out a way in which that can work with regards to the project spec. So there's a lot of room. If you come with cool ideas, then we're willing to be flexible and let you explore those ideas, um, which is part of the nice thing of doing an honors. Um, it also includes the opportunity to take modules from other honors degrees within the School of IT, so informatics, information science, publishing, and computer science. Most of our students do take, a, sometimes, sorry, most of the, if they take an extra module, they take it from computer science, um, because it's obviously relevant. Um, publishing and information science, however, is open to you, and then informatics, probably not so relevant, but also open to you. Just keep in mind the prerequisites for any of their modules. It's worth contacting their package coordinator and finding out if you have a module that you're very interested in, just find out, can I do this as a multimedia student? We get a number of BIT students doing our modules, and some things that they, there are some things that they're not necessarily prepared for. So it's worth just asking from our side if, as a multimedia student, you're prepared for that. Okay, yeah, that's an overview of our degree. And then the entrance requirements to be aware of, uh, you need a BIS multimedia or an equivalent degree. I'm not speaking to anyone who doesn't have, not gonna have BIS multimedia, so I'll leave that out. Um, you need an average of, le of at least 60% in your third year IMY modules and your third year computer science modules or uh, what's not written here, no sorry, they're or, um, a combined average of between 55 and 60. However, it's quite a flexible process and if you apply, um, you, I'm not saying you're, you're definitely gonna get in if your marks are like 40s, um, in which case you're not passing anyway, so, but um, just apply anyway because uh, we are quite flexible with regards to, it's not like there's a computer that just goes, looks at all your marks and says no. So apply if you're interested and chances are you'll probably get in because this is not a very high requirement. The only thing is that it says here resulting in probation for the first semester of honors. That just means that if you do have that average between 55 and 60, we usually say you're on probation, which means you can't fail anything in your first semester, which is very unlikely. People don't really fail honors modules. It's just not the, the way it really works. So. Um, basically, it's quite easy to get into, and I suggest that you apply regardless of your marks um, and just see what happens. Okay, so um, the biggest part, which is the modules, just to run you through the actual stuff that you'll be doing in each module um, in, the, in the degree. So you have core modules, three of those, and then the rest of them are electives. And then out of the electives, there's five, you have to pick at least four. So essentially, at the end of the day, you end up with seven modules for your degree. Okay, so the first one is, we call it research math, which is you learn how to do research properly. This is INY because it's taught by someone in the Department of Information Science, not within multimedia, and um, who's a professor, and they will teach you the basics, introduce you to how to do research. This is important because in any postgraduate degree, you need to have some research skills. It is slightly a research degree. It's not, you, we're not expecting you to, you know, end up with a master's degree, but we, you do have to have some of those skills so that if a few years down the line you want to come back and do your master's, you actually have some of those skills already. So they'll teach you the process of how to search the literature, how to, how to read papers, how to put them together, how to synthesize them, how to come up with your own research questions, how to design a study, and how to gather the data, that sort of thing, all of those important things. Then we have IMY772. Um, I do have, Jan is online, he's the lecturer for this module, but I don't know, Tiny, if you want to say, do, would you like to introduce him? Yes, go for it. Hello, can everybody hear me? Uh, I, I know people online can hear me, but can people in the class? Yes, we can. I'm just muting myself so you don't echo. Okay, great stuff. Uh, so I guess, uh, I'm my 772 is, in quotes, the industry experience module of the IMI honors degree. Essentially, in this particular module, you look at a client and you have to develop some sort of solution for your client. These solutions are generally web based, and the classes that we're giving are all about the web technology that we're going to use. The classes that we're giving are with the AWS system, so they are official AWS content, uh, AWS Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, there we go, that's, that's the word. And uh, somewhere in between, you are also going to be asked to write the official Amazon exam. So when you're done with this particular module, technically you should be certified to be a cloud engineer as well. Um, yeah, I think that's all I need to explain about any question on this particular module. Cool. 
Thanks, Tiny. There's no questions live. So if you guys have any questions, you're free to ask them later or pop it in the chat. Cool. So that's IMY772. And then the last core module is 761, which is your year project. So this is the only year module. Uh, in the beginning of the year, you start out uh, do it, identifying a research area that you'd like to focus on. That can be anything from VR, HCI, games, whatever. Um, and then you're going to just basically work with a supervisor, which is one of us in the department, and um, sort of nar narrow it down to something that you can actually develop for and then test. So you have there is a development component. You have to create something, whether that's a VR application or a mini game or a someone's doing a um, Discord bot this this year or a um, anything AR. Someone's done a board game, like whatever, whatever works for the project that you're going for. Um, and then you also carry out the research on the side. So you have your development side, but then you're also carrying out a project to determine how does this thing that you're developing answer certain questions. So for example, the Discord bot is to gamify IMY120. So it's how do we motivate the students to um, submit their assignments on time using a Discord bot. So the Discord bot is meant to make it more interesting to convince the students to submit their assignments before the deadline. Sorry, more. Uh, sooner before the deadline than like last minute, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's, that's like a research question. So then she's done the literature search and un sort of understands what people have done before. She developed the Discord bot and then she's gonna test it um, in, in the module with the students, gather some data and then write the final write up, which is a um, research paper at the end of the semester, at the end of the year. Um, we provide you with topics for this, mod for this section, but if you have your own topic that is suitably um, that's suited, it's not too broad, it's not too specific, it's not too crazy big or too small, then or will help you to focus it, um, then you can also do that. Uh, but we've just found that it helps to give some topics initially because it's quite hard to come up with your own topic when you don't really know what are the boundaries of this weird research project that you're doing. Um, so that's a year project, you spend the whole year working on this and then, yeah, done by the end of the year. Uh, sorry, can I just add something to that? So this is just from my experience, but like I think most people tend to go for sp certain specific kind of stuff like VR or gamification because that's like the kind of stuff that we already are focused on, so we kind of give those as examples. But this is very, yeah, like Nick said, it is very broad. So like if you, this is a great like place where if you have some kind of an interest in like the, you know, kind of something that maybe was touched on in undergrad or something, but you haven't really like done enough of it and you are interested in it, in it, then this is a great place to like explore that in more depth because you're going to be doing like a crap ton of reading on the subject and you're going to actually be doing like a research thing on your own about this topic. So, yeah. Yeah. We definitely recommend picking something that interests you. So don't just do VR because it's a cool buzzword. If you don't enjoy VR, do something that you actually enjoy because you will, like Diffie says, do a lot of reading on the topic. Okay, so those were your core modules. You have to do all three of those at some point during your degree. Oh, let me just briefly mention, um, in case someone is busy planning their modules, we always recommend 711, that's the first one, and 761 to be taken together in the sense that do 711 either while you're doing 761 or before you do 761 because it teaches you the research methods and without that you're really going to struggle in 761. So that's the only one that we really recommend should be done at least um, together or before. Cool. Then the electives, you choose at least four, there are five, and um, one, no, up to two of these, yes, I'll, I need to confirm on the yearbook, two of them can be from outside multimedia, so they can be, these can be the computer science ones, and it's not like you have to do them in addition to these four, you just need four electives that are honors level subjects, so you can go do two computer science and do two multimedia, and that would be your degree. So the first one is animation, theory and practice, so um, I'm the one who teaches, I teach this module, we don't, I don't teach you how to animate because the assumption is by the time you get to honors, you know how to animate. Uh, we look at different animation styles, so traditional animation, stop motion, 3D, 2D, um, all sorts, and the theory behind how those are created, how to create them well, um, how to write a good story, how to apply animation principles, and the final um, project for this module is a 90 second animation that tells a story. Um, natural motion, meaning you're probably doing frame by frame animation for the whole animation. And you learn 12 principles of animation which you learn how to apply really well to create good animation. We also do um, a movie, the semester test is movie analysis. 
Um, and then throughout the semester, you also do a bunch of little assignments, which I'll show you in the showreel, um, like stop motion assignments and little flip books and all sorts of things to apply the skills that you learn in, in class. Uh, IMY779, that is taught by Dave, uh, which is like IMY310, but on honors level. So you don't go through a textbook, you've learned all the theory now, and then now what you're gonna do is you're gonna apply this to a topic of your choice. So find a question that you're interested in, for example, uh, when I did honors, I, I don't know how this was 779, but I did something like, how do men and women play Dota differently or something? And then I had them play Dota and then I gathered ridiculous data and then compared it or something. Or like, how do people interact with this app and if we change it in this way, how do they interact differently? So you're taking IMI310 and you're putting it in a real world context with some research added and you're right, you're, the, the final output as far as I understand is a research paper, but um, it's on a topic that you choose. Um, anything else someone, you want to say on that? 779? Um, no, it's a little bit like 761 but on a smaller scale, I guess. Yeah. yeah, although he doesn't require you to dev anything. You don't necessarily have to develop something, you can just do a prototype if that's what's fine for your um, topic. So, yeah. Okay, then we have 771. This is, <laughs> this year, we are looking at speculative and fictional design. So we're getting a bunch of guest lectures from international, or international universities and they are um, discussing what is speculative design, what does it mean to design something for the future, how do we design something that can't, that does, that can't exist right now, and, and then so we look at design in like a very weird abstract way, um, and a lot of the projects in this module are around coming up with cool ideas for the future, not actually doing, creating anything tangible, but thinking about how does tech progress and what's it going to look like. In, a, in 10, 20, 50 years time. So it's super um, vague and out there. Um, 773 multimedia technology might change slightly next year uh, in terms of what we do, but the focus here is on tech. So um, this year we looked at different types of tech. So VR, AR, geez, help me remember, wearables, um, blockchain. blockchain, crypto, all sorts of different tech. Um, and how it can be applied in South African context and in general. Um, I'm not giving too much information about this because it might change next year, but the topic of technology is going to remain the same. And then IMY774, I'll leave to Diffie. Do you want to just come stand here in front of the yeah. mic so that they can... <coughs> You're me. Yeah. Okay, um, so what uh, 774 is, uh, basically it's about VR. So this is very much like a VR-focused module. Um, it's a little bit like a mini IMY 300, but specifically focused on VR, except that you don't necessarily have to make a game. But like, um, yeah, so the lectures are very much about like what VR is and theory and stuff behind it and how certain things work. And because you know, I'm me, I talk a lot about sound. Uh, and so, uh, and then the project that runs throughout the semester is basically coming up with an idea for a VR project. We kind of workshop it a little bit at the start. And then there's a bunch of deliverables throughout the semester that's like, um, you know, reaching certain kind of milestones in terms of completeness and getting feedback and iterating on that and so on. So, and then the, uh, the final result is just like a VR project. So there's no other component, no research, no, um, you know, engaging with the theory. There's like a class presentation that you have to prepare for as well. But the, the main gist of it is just like make a, a cool VR app, essentially. So that's like the the gist of the thing. And we will also look at some examples in the show reel. Let's go to the next slide. Oh, did I mention all the lectures? Okay. Yeah, that's cool. it. Okay. Okay, so that's the summary um, of all the modules. And just the credits, doesn't really matter that much, but, and you can see cause and electives, and then the 761 is the year project. This is all on the website, by the way. Um, if you just Google BIS Multimedia Honors, you'll find the yearbook on there. Cool. So uh, the next video, I think the next one is a showreel. Okay, cool. So this is a showreel. Um, you'll see VR projects. Um, the first half is animation. First half is animation, um, which is just a mishmash of the final year, the final projects as well as little um, assignments in between. So I think it's it is labeled as to what it is, and then there's all the VR experiences, um, which are filmed with a webcam. So you can also see the person in real life doing the thing in VR. So. Enjoy. It's not labeled, it's just a mishmash. So, but you'll, you'll get oh, that's not labeled, yeah. yeah. Well, no, no, none of it's labeled. Really. Oh. Well, that, it says animation <laughs> and then it's everything. Oh, I'm confusing my showreel with your showreel. Okay, cool. 
Um, how do I mute myself? Oh, I just need to mute myself on here. So hopefully that gave you a bit more of an idea of what to expect. Oh, cool. Oh, this is you. Hmm? Okay. Um, okay. So one of the things that Honors also gives you is access to the VRI lab. So the VRI lab is literally the venue next door. Um, it's I don't. Uh, Many of you have probably been there for something. I don't know, we've done a thousand demonstrations in there, so it's you know, statistically likely that you were one of them. Um, so, uh, why? Okay. So basically what the lab is, is it's a bunch of high-end PCs and access to a lot of like cool equipment that you can use for development. So, you know, the stuff we've talked about, um, it's very much, uh, uh, VR centered. Um, so we have XTC Vives. We actually have two Vive Pros and one Vive Pro I, basically like pretty high end VR headsets. The one, the Vive Pro I, um, has eye tracking as well, which is pretty fancy. Um, and then they come with uh, Vive controllers, but we also have fancy controllers, which are called uh, index controllers or codename Knuckles, which are like they kind of strap onto your hand and they do very accurate tracking of where your fingers are, as well as things like pressure, like how hard you press it and stuff like that. 
Um, we also have a couple of other random peripherals, like just these motion trackers you can like strap onto like something. Like we've had um, projects where, for example, people strap on a tracker around a belt and around like your legs to like track where your body is in space, and you can move your legs and you can see the result in VR as well, and things like that. Um, we sort of. I don't actually, yeah, maybe Magic Leap shouldn't be on here because I don't think I can really promise that you would have access to that. Mm -hmm. But like that's the, the one AR headset um, that is kind of within the department, but like it's, <laughs> it's, it's complicated. Um, okay, so, and then also obviously the mobile VR stuff, um, we've had that in the past. That was more of a contingency thing when you couldn't, when people couldn't access like the real thing. Um, also, I mean, lot, what many people are doing, like surprisingly many people, is um, that they actually have access to like their own, like I said, like an Oculus uh, Quest or something like that. And then, you know, I basically let people use that at home and submit, you know, like, and then I mark it on my side and so on. So however, um, you know, works for you. But specifically the lab provides access to these things so that you can just like book some time, um, you know, and use the equipment and develop stuff on it and so on. So we have a video, is that the video That's where... The video of Dave for long time. Okay, so we have a video on our YouTube channel where Dave basically introduces all the equipment in great detail. So you can check that if you want like a full breakdown, but the short version of it is like cool VR stuff um, and other peripherals that you can use to develop um, applications on. Um, then, just generally speaking, um, like we have like the lab and us to an extent, but mostly other people have also been involved um, in um, kind of other development projects for other departments. So for, we've actually had like pretty long standing arrangements with mining engineering because mining has been going into the whole VR thing for quite a few years now. Um, there's currently uh, big projects being developed for medical science. Um, there's also a thing, an arrangement that um, is currently going with the company Xaro, uh, which is under the Xaro chair in extended research, extended reality technology. So basically, everything's related to mines, like um, using uh, it to increase like safety, like train people how to do certain procedures and stuff without having a, to send them uh, down in an actual mine, and then helping educate, you know, like provide applications for understanding like visualization like info visualization with to, to do with um you know like mining software and so on and i mean there's also been a couple of stuff in the past that have kind of appeared but not really gone anywhere things with um, bolt environment um civil engineering yeah, so the EMS, um, we've also done like one or two projects in collaboration with companies like APUs. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that's been going on for, um, for quite a few years in, in this area. Um, and then, like I said, a lot of VR stuff, but we've also been branching into AR, augmented reality, um, because of new commercially available stuff. So, I mean, our de de developers are currently develop well, trying to develop stuff for the Microsoft HoloLens 2 headsets. Um, and that's also why the Magic Leap is there. And then this also obviously involves a lot of other things to do with like, where do you get the model? So things like 3D scan, 3D graphics, digital scanning, photogrammetry. Uh, I know for the mining stuff, they actually worked a lot with like LiDAR data, like laser scanning. And it just back like a million polygons into Unity and what's your PC, catch fire and all that stuff. And then things to do with, you know, like very real world issues here, like um, optimization for the different headsets, because when you have like a big PC, you can power all sorts of things, but then you port it to a, like a, a standalone headset and suddenly the thing can't run at more than like five frames a second. So uh, a lot of, you know, optimization is sort of thing. And Unreal Engine is specifically mentioned here because that's kind of the engine of choice for the uh, people doing the development um, for this uh, these projects. I know the one guy has used Unity for one thing before, but it's mostly Unreal. Um, oh, is this? Oh, yeah. So here's just an example of uh, one of the things that um, the that, that's currently being developed for uh, medical science, just to show you like the type of stuff that's going on. So this is 
kind of hard to understand without context, but basically there's a procedure if someone like loses consciousness and you basically have to open like their airway and the procedure is like, well, everyone's just been calling it jaw thrust. It's pretty gruesome, but you basically have to like pull some chin up and open their airway and do all sorts of stuff. So the point here is just to use the hand tracking and stuff uh, in the Oculus Quest headset to provide like a, an, a fairly detailed simulation of the, this. Um, so that you can train people to do this, um, like the, get the gist of it before giving them like the next step, which is using like a dummy simulator or something like that. Which the students keep breaking. Yeah, apparently the students keep breaking it and it costs like, costs like a million rand or something. So yeah, anyway, so this is one example. Uh, And then the other one is, this is specifically something for mining. So basically, um, this is something called hazard detection, which basically refers to um, like looking at a mine shaft and being like, that's not safe, that's not safe, and so on, and training people to spot these errors. So this is basically, um, oops, this was made from real world data. So pulling in, like I said, like a billion polygons and like, like and then actually making the simulation very realistic and then there's like an interface for like marking which errors are uh, there and this is also gamified for the end masters oh you're right game turn into a game based learning type situation yeah so and this is used by the mining engineering students students postgrads i don't know i think um, it's probably because it's really dangerous to send a bunch of students down into the mine so let's have them train in real life or in VR first um, so that they can put a place to recognize because it's faults in the rock and that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so those are just two two examples of you know development stuff that's actually currently going on within the VR uh, within the multimedia department. And yeah, you're gonna talk about this. Yeah. Okay, so part-time positions. We have for next year two positions available for honors students um, or master students, but none of you guys are those, um, who want to work in the department um, and do their honors either full-time or part-time. Uh, so the position is for 24 hours a week, which works out to around 11,000 rand a month. And your honors studies are also fully funded, so by Exaro. Um, and so essentially you'll be spending about a quarter to a third of your time working on Exaro projects, all the stuff that Diffie just mentioned, mainly mining applications, but you get, you'll get decent experience in VR stuff if you show initiative in doing those things. So you essentially it's however much time you want to put into the, the, that aspect of the job, you get the experience. And then you'll also be helping with assistant lecturer duties in the department, so that's helping us on our modules in undergrad, at undergrad level. It's a really fun, fun laid back job. It's a really um, nice transition into the working world that's not like an official corporate job. Um, and it also gives you a lot more time to work on your honors as opposed to a full time job in industry. So um, if you're interested, please apply by sending me your CV, cover letter and academic record by the 30th of September. Um, and I'll get back to you, obviously. And yeah, if you're interested in, uh, I'll take a question now. If you have any, if you want any more information, you're welcome to contact me. Alternatively, you can also speak to Reynard and Nicole, who are both working as ALs this year, and they will give you a first-hand experience rundown of how it goes. Um, but you had a question, yes. So is this only for part -time? It's not the full-time. There isn't a full-time position available. We only have part-time positions available. No, I mean, you have to take part-time on this. No, you, Reynard is doing his honors full-time. No, but it's also 24 hours. So either way, you, we can't employ you for more than 24 hours. You can choose whether you want to do your honors full time um, and work, do this, or do both part time. Well, yeah. Um, it is definitely possible to do your honors full time and this job. It's going to be more demanding, but it's going to be less demanding than doing a full time industry, industry job. Um, potentially less demanding than doing your, uh, on your work full time and your honors part time if you're, not, if you're working in industry versus doing your work part-time and your honors full-time here. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, to give you an idea, because, I mean, work is like, you you know, you, every day eight to five, and then after that is when you, you know, you have to find time to do your stuff, and that's also why I, I never recommend people do both, because it's rough, because I, I did it for a few months, and I would not recommend it. So, like, 
Um, you know, this just having to do like this is like five hours a day ish. Mm. So and then you know, there's more than enough time to still do your honor. You still work on your study like the rest of your time. So, yeah. Sorry. So in order to be an AL, you have to do the entire work as well. Um, the position is funded by Xaro, but actually, when I come to think of it now, we actually have currently three positions um, for ALs, two, for, two paid for by Xaro, one paid for by the department, which would not be an Xaro position. I'm not 100% um, sure if that, if that one will exist next year. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to go with yes, but um, like I say, at this point in time, the Xaro portion of the work is next to non-existent. So it, it's very much like if you want to do the Xora portion of the work, you go speak to the developers. We'll set up meetings and whatever, but you can go speak to the developers and be like, I want to get in on this thing. And then you get in on that thing. But if you don't, then there's also a little bit more like, okay, well, cool. Um, it's hard to explain how that came about, but yeah. Um, any other questions on this? Okay. Yes. No, it's fine. Um, is there any requirements for it as well, like So... We obviously consider the pool of applicants based on what we get. We, we, we need ALs for next year, so, um, but you would ideally need a distinction in some of them, in, no, not a distinction for your degree, but like... Yeah, I mean, preferably for a stuff that... You you're going like to... For the multi yes, yeah. 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 No, I mean, we can't really have that requirement. <laughs> that would be a problem, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a distinction ideally in the modules that we would want you to, to help with, which would mainly be MI220, 120, 110. 310 and... 310 a little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. But if you're interested, just apply and or speak to me and then I can help you out. Okay, um, so just on to the last stage of the presentation, which is how to apply. Um, if you're an existing student, like you guys are undergrads, you simply log into the Student Center, um, where it gives you academic record and all that. There's a little thingy that says Admission. You click on that, you go to the thing that says Internal Application. You pick BIS Multimedia and you click Submit. It's like a two-minute process. What yes. What the field is a motivation? Oh, you know, can leave that blank. Yeah. So you can leave the motivation blank. Um, what you, that will... Or you uh, can just explain why you want to do all that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's a question. Would you actually No, it? I've never received a motivation, I ever. I know four computer science students this year who clicked submit and got accepted like within the week without yeah. writing a motivation. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if it's different here. No. Mm -hmm. Jody has a question. The motivation is also limited to like 120 <laughs> So you really have to yeah. think about... Yeah. No, you write the whole essay and then you can do a submit and um, there's a yucky error. Good day. Good day. Good day. <laughs> yeah, you can say please. No. Um, so what happens is when you submit that, the reason why they got admission within the week is when you submit that, if you were to say fill it in tonight, um, it goes to admin who sends it to me and I would admit you conditionally based on, well, actually no, admin will automatically admit you conditionally based on the fact that you're in multimedia, um, basically just that, because you have the basic multimedia requirements. So you'll be conditionally admitted and then following from that, at the end of the year when all your marks are finalized, then we'll look at your marks and then admit you officially based on that. But you'll get conditional acceptance really quickly. Um, so you can do this at any point, it's really fast to do. Um, and even if you're unsure about doing honors, I suggest just doing it so that next year, if you do decide to change your mind, you have the application there. You can always reject it. Like it's, it's not like you have to pay to apply. It's just apply. Um, you have to do this by the 30th of November this year you want to apply. Cool. Um, this doesn't apply to any of you, but I'm just going to say it for the benefit of anyone who has friends in BIT or B BIKS rather, um, or anyone who's listening to the recording, but we sometimes get BIKS students taking our modules. Um, for them, I wrote here BIT, it's IKS. They have a four-year degree, which is their undergrad is four years long. So our modules have a four year, a number four in front of the code instead of a seven, which is very confusing. So if you were doing IMI triple seven, for them it's IMI four seven seven, which just messes up all the admin, but it's fine. Um, it's just worth knowing that so that they know which ones to register for. Um, and also it's just worth being aware that if you take any of the multimedia modules as a non-multimedia stu student, there may be some things that are, some gaps in your knowledge, specifically if you were to do um, animation, is the main one, 
where people kind of join triple seven and they've never animated before at all and that can be a little bit of a um, <laughs> learning curve yeah but uh, the modules are open to them okay and then things you should know uh, this is just some general stuff I put in here um, our honors classes tend to run throughout the mid-semester recess Although we've gotten a little bit more lax on this recently because we also like to take a break during the recess. <laughs> but not the mid-year recess, and, um, but there, are, there may be deadlines that are due like on a, um, like if it's a week-long recess, there may be a deadline in the middle of that. But as an honor student, it probably won't affect you because you're working anyway. So it doesn't really matter, it's just worth knowing. Um, yeah. Um, I have managed to convince Diffie not to give class on public holidays, so that's, that's a big win. <laughs> we won't be doing that. Um, classes start the same week as undergrad classes, which is the 20th of Feb next year. So it's not going to be class. The first, during that week will be the first meeting, um, which is basically kind of like we just did now. We're going to explain all the modules again and tell you what the days are that they're going to run on because they run on different nights of the week. And you're going to tell us which ones you're going to do for the year so that we can have our admin um, sorted and that's basically what the first meeting is going to be about. Um, you can keep an eye on the UP website. The information science page sometimes gets updated with the date of the first meeting. Otherwise, I will just email you. If you have applied and been accepted for honors, I will send you an email next year and then you will know when the first meeting is. Um, for more information, look at our yearbook or email me or Diffie, but I'm technically the package coordinator, but it doesn't really matter. And that's about it. So are there any questions? Yes. The two modules, um, trends and methodologies, what are the like, assessments that you do? Is it like, also research papers that you do, or is it just like presentation? Or? That's a good question. So just to re-say that for the people online, trends and technology, um, so 771 and 773, what are the assessments? Um, for 773, this year was class presentations. Um, you go research a topic, not research as in like academic research, more like current affairs research, uh, like current state of technology. Um, that's probably going to change next year. That's 773. 771 this year is quite fun. You come up with a hypothetical product video. So like, you know, those cool product videos they put on YouTube, you come up with a hi for a hypothetical product. You do a video sketch based on a prototype. Yeah, you come up with a prototype. Uh, I, think, I think there's also a diegetic product. No? No, there isn't. So um, video sketch, I think, and sorry, I'm not teaching this module, <laughs> as you can tell. But it's also uh, present, like a TED talk. Oh, a TED like talk type presentation on like the future tech that you're choosing. So like a lot of it's kind of framed like, you have, like pretend this thing exists, you know, what are the issues? So like, you know, this, you know, what are the weird ethical issues that it causes? And, you know, how do you, you know, they're kind of getting into that mindset of like thinking about this thing as if it exists and what problems it causes and what it solves and so on about something that might be like a 50 years old in the future. Does that answer your question? Okay, I just want to address this question here for the animation module. Does it help with applying for animation companies? I assume you mean like Pixar and DreamWorks and maybe a little bit closer to home like Triggerfish or whatever, but um, not, it's, we don't go into enough detail, I don't think. I c yeah, for, I mean, I get it, sorry, just because I recently kind of had to have this conversation with someone, I think for animation specifically... Can you maybe come stand here? Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't trip a bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so for animation stuff specifically, I think the thing that really um, matters is your portfolio. Like, um, just because that's the thing that you're going to show to companies and they're going to use to decide uh, whether to hire you or not. So, I mean, I think... Yes, it'll help you in the sense that it gives you opportunity to create stuff that you might use in the portfolio, but you're not going to be able to use IMI triple seven, I think, and be like, "Hey, I did this animation thing." It's not like going to like the animation school in Johannesburg and you know applying with that. Yeah, it's just one module. Yeah, that's good. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Um. Yeah, so for 772, you, um, as far as I know how he did it this year, he he got booking voucher, discount vouchers for the, for the exams, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, he's online. Yeah, and can you tell us how the AWS official certification tests worked, please? Um, it, it, it's really not dead. No. 
Is it just about no. the AWS official certification works like this? So um, we have classes for roughly, I want to say, 10 weeks in a row. We have classes. After you do all the classes, you pretty much cover all the official AWS content. And from that point onwards, um, you have the opportunity to write this test. Now, if you don't want to write it, you're more than welcome to not write it. But writing it first, they give you a certification. And secondly, it forms part of the semester mark, which only elevates your mark. Okay, if you talk about mark marks. <coughs> In terms of certification wise, because you are writing with moi, okay, I, I am, I'm the almighty person who knows everything about Amazon, you get a giant discount as well. Do you have a follow up question? Uh, any, any other questions? <laughs> Oh, two different options. So, okay, so is that going to be a thing? Um, can, Tiny, can you give some information on two different options of tests? So you can go right at the venue or you can write from home, right? Or is that not a thing anymore? Um, it's always, it's, it's still a thing that you can either write at home or write in the venue, but you, you can talk to some, um, I don't know what PAs where you can't write under the dossier at home, and his experience is that it's very awkward because you have to set up a webcam and you have to show the invigilator who's going to watch you over the webcam write the test and you have to show him the room. So you take your webcam and you go around the room, showing them underneath the table that there's nothing there. You show them that there's nothing in the room, there's no papers or anything. So you can do that in the comfort of, well, I don't know if comfort is the right word, but in the comfort of your own home. Um, the other option is there are testing venues all around Victoria, there are testing venues all around Joko. You just need to let me know which venue you're writing in and I can sort out the certification or more things for you. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Thanks, Tiny. That has answered all the questions. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any questions. No. Okay. No questions online. Yeah. Do we still have a three D printer? Technically, yes. Um, that's a complicated It's question. unplugged, but we have it. <laughs> um, we don't, the person who knew how to use it has left. And we don't have the time or energy to learn how to use it properly because it takes a lot of iterations to figure out how to print thing, things properly. So we're trying to set up a collaboration with a makerspace at the library to lend them our printer. Um, they print stuff for us uh, because they know what they're doing. And yeah, so does that answer your question? It would definitely be possible if you wanted to. I know in the past you could people have used it for like to print prototypes and stuff. For like I think Dave did it for printing controller prototypes for his stuff. So you it, we would be able to probably arrange something if that was necessary. Yeah. You would pay here as well though. But probably less. Well, cause our, our arrangement has always been if it's for your studies, then you don't pay. Oh, for, for us, it was, yeah, if it was for your studies. And I'm sure we can arrange that within the department to just pay for the, the printing cost of that yeah. if it's for studies. So, yeah. Cool. Any other questions? No. Okay. Well, then we are finished. You guys are welcome to go. Please email me if you have any questions. Please apply. Just in case, if you're not sure, just apply. Then. And apply to be an AL. Yeah, apply to be an AL, please. <laughs> we really need ALs. And it's a really fun job, I promise. If they just take the technical bit of the other way, they can take the other way. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.